Hey guys, my name is Matt Johnson, and in camera news, Canon recently announced the EOS RP full frame mirrorless camera. Now, I actually shoot on Sony, but I did want to make a quick video talking about the video specs of this camera and my thoughts about it. Also, this video is not going to be about every single spec and feature of this camera, just the ones that interest me as a filmmaker. And I am making this video right after the camera was announced, so I'm sure some of these specs are subject to change. First up, the EOS RP shoots video in 4K. In 8 bit at 3840 by 2160 at up to 24 frames per second. 25 frames per second if you happen to not live in America and use the PAL video standard. Yes, that means there is no 4K at 30 frames per second and definitely no 4K at 60 frames per second. And while a lot of filmmakers, myself included, prefer to shoot at 24 frames per second because it is more cinematic, one of the main concerns about this camera is that Canon is pushing this sensor to its absolute limit to even make it capable of recording in 4K at 24 frames per second. And this means that this sensor is most likely going to have a lot of rolling shutter whenever you are panning the camera. Some early video reviews are out about this camera and they are indicating that there is a lot of rolling shutter. The 4K video on this camera is also going to be cropped. And depending on which article you read or review that you watch, that crop is gonna be anywhere from a 1.6 times crop to a 1.8 times crop either slightly better or the same as the Canon EOS R that came out last year. The RP is capable of recording in 1080p HD at up to 60 frames per second though. Unfortunately, there is no sign of a 120 frames per second recording option, even at 720p like on the EOS R. And what's really bizarre, there is no option to record 24 frames per second in 1080p, only 30 frames per second or 60 frames per second. In addition, I feel like I'm just adding onto the cons of this camera at this point, there is also a 30 minute video recording limit with this camera. I wish that Canon went the direction that Panasonic went with all their cameras and now Sony with the new a6400 where they are doing away with the 30 minute recording limit, but that does not appear to be the case with the RP. I really wished we'd already reached the bottom when talking about this camera, but now we need to talk about the worst feature of the EOS RP. The autofocus. And I hear you, Matt. You're saying, Matt, it's Canon. Canon has the dual pixel autofocus. It's amazing. How dare you slander the name of dual pixel autofocus? Well, unfortunately, whenever you are recording in 4K, dual pixel autofocus is not available. You are limited to a contrast-based autofocus. To be clear, much like the Canon M50, you still have dual pixel autofocus whenever you're recording in 1080p with this camera. But if you want to record in 4K, not possible. And that's a major bummer because I feel like 4K vloggers would absolutely love this camera. It has a flip around screen. It has a mic jack. It is basically built for vlogging. If only it had good autofocus, something that vloggers really need. I actually have in my notes that I made while preparing for this video, say now it's time for some sad news. <laughs> but there's already been a lot of that, so here's some more. Unfortunately, there is no IBIS, no in-body image stabilization built into this camera, or really any of Canon's cameras for that matter. In other sad news, the RP does not use the same LPE6 battery that's used in the EOS R or the 5D Mark IV. Instead, it is using the much smaller LPE17 battery that's used in Canon's Rebel series of DSLR cameras. I'm thinking this may be a size thing, and Canon is presenting this camera as an upgrade for people People coming from a rebel, so it kind of makes sense, but considering there are so many full frame filmmakers out there that already have a ton of LPE6 batteries, I do wish this camera did support that battery. This smaller battery does also make me worried about battery life, especially if you're recording in 4K. Next up, let's talk about ISO and low light performance. Much like the EOS R, the RP also has a maximum ISO of 102,400, but unlike the EOS R, it has a smaller megapixel sensor. 26 instead of 30 megapixels. So my hope is that the low light performance will be slightly improved over the EOS R. What about Canon Log, Matt? C-Log, the picture profile on the EOS R, the 5D Mark IV, the C100, C300, etc., etc., that lets you shoot in a flatter picture profile for easier color grading. What if I wanna shoot in that picture profile on the EOS RP? Well, that may be one of the saddest, but also one of the funniest things about this camera, because several days ago, there was a leaked PDF that came out before this camera was announced. And on it was a massive spreadsheet of all of the specs and features of this camera. And there was a line that said Canon Log, and next to it, it said, no. <laughs> Not some flowery description like, oh, unfortunately not possible, not coming in a future firmware update like Panasonic with the S1 and S1R. No, just no, not available. Sorry, 
Too bad. Buy an EOS R if you want C-Log. There is one bright spot about this camera announcement that actually did make me really happy though. Whenever Canon announced this camera, they also announced their roadmap for new RF mount lenses. And these are actually very impressive. Canon says that in 2019, they will be releasing a 15 to 35 millimeter F2.8, a 24 to 70 millimeter F2.8, a 70 to 200 millimeter F2.8, and an 85 millimeter 1.2. All of these lenses except for the 85 millimeter 1.2 have image stabilization built in. Considering how much people raved about the 28 to 70 millimeter F2 and the 50 millimeter F1.2 that Canon released with the EOS R, I am very excited to see Canon pushing the envelope with these new lenses. I am sure that all of these RF lenses will be very sharp, very heavy and honestly very expensive because considering that the 50 millimeter 1.2 is currently on sale at B&H and is still $2,100, I highly doubt that any of these newly announced lenses will retail for less than two grand, which is kind of crazy because that is a lot more expensive than this camera. How much does the RP cost? Price is actually, I think, the most positive thing that I have to say about this camera. This camera is going to start at $1,299, which considering that it's a full frame camera, that seems quite reasonable. It even comes with a free EF to R mount lens adapter, which I think is really great for people that already have a ton of EF lenses that have been considering switching over to mirrorless. The EOS RP will be released on February 27th and pre-orders are open now, but I kind of doubt that you're gonna wanna pre-order it after I just told you all of the video features and I wasn't super kind about it. So here are my overall thoughts on this camera. Much like how Canon took the 5D Mark IV, added 4K and some extra autofocus points and made the EOS R, I feel like Canon has taken the 6D Mark II, added 4K and some autofocus points and made the EOS RP. This camera cost $1,000 less than the EOS R, but with that price drop, you're giving up a lot from a video feature standpoint. No 120 frames per second video, even at 720p. No 24 frames per second at 1080p. No C-Log. And most importantly, no dual pixel autofocus when recording in 4K. Filmmakers that shoot Canon love to tout two features that they say make their cameras better than anybody else. The first is gorgeous colors and skin tones straight out of camera. The second is the legendary near flawless dual pixel autofocus. With the EOS RP though, you're giving up half of that if you're shooting in 4K. So will I be buying one? I don't think so. If I wanted to buy a camera that was capable of recording in 4K at up to 24 frames per second with approximately an APS-C sized crop, I would go back to early 2016 and purchase a Sony a6300, or an a6500, or an a6400, or Honestly, a uh, Fuji X-T3, which has an APS-C size crop, but is capable of recording 4K at 60 frames per second in 10-bit. My view on Canon is this. While basically all other camera manufacturers are trying to cram as many video specs and capabilities and features into their cheaper cameras as they possibly can, Canon has proven time and time again that they really have no interest in being competitive in this area. And that is honestly frustrating. So in conclusion, I guess what I'm saying with this video about the EOS RP is go buy a Fuji X-T3. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.